Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to uh, Real Talk, where we just like to talk about things in life and church and really anything we think is helpful for you. And uh, today, we got something that probably no one relates with, and that is how do you stay connected with Jesus when you're super busy? Like Super, I, super niche conversation. Right? Yeah, yeah, no one's ever no one's busy. busy. Like I, I can't. That is like the default response in and out of the church. People are busy. And, and so, man, we want to try to answer the question, help you guys like kind of hear how do we stay connected to Jesus when we're busy, right? Because the, the most important thing for us, even as pastors, is is being connected to Jesus. And so we're going to share, hopefully, some helpful tips that you can apply in your life. And I'll go ahead and just start us with a couple, and then we'll, we'll roll out. You know, mine, the first one, as I think about this question, how do I stay connected to Jesus when I'm busy? Like, it, it's not even a super practical thing, but I think it's important to start with. John 15, Jesus says, like, abide in me, and I will abide in you. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And I, I think it really starts from that mindset. I think our mindset is, I'm I'm overwhelmed. I got all this stuff to do and I got to fit Jesus like kind of into that. You know, I, I no time to have a quiet time. And I, I think really we need to start with the opposite and say, okay, like I, I can do and do and do and produce nothing. And so I, I think it's a, a humility mindset that says, okay, like my day is not going to be good. Like it's not going to be productive. It's not going to be fruitful unless I'm doing this with Jesus. So what does it look like for me to do this with Jesus? So I think that's number one uh, for me. And then very practically, I am an INTJ, um, Enneagram 1. And so for me, very practically. That, that, that's the architect, by the way. Yeah, so for anyone who is like very structured, uh, you're going to relate to this. If you're organic, maybe you'll relate to one of theirs. But for me, uh, I, I literally, on my Google calendar, I have something, uh, a meeting every morning at 8.30 a.m. It says, God. meet with God. Exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I got right here he's, on my got, Google God, calendar. God is time blocked. I love yeah, that. Yeah, God book. has a slot on my calendar. And so the reason I do that is for one, because serious, yeah, yeah you, you feel guilty if you ignore that meeting because yeah, right. it pops up on my phone. But, but really what's really helpful about that is I, this is not free time. You know, like when I have something, when I like book a meeting with you and I don't show up to that, like I, I'm busy during that time, you know? So I, I just had to establish the rhythm and it took time to carve that out and figure out what's the best time for me. And so I just kind of take that 30 minute window. Ideally it's an hour, but that 30 minute window, I say, all right, this is the time with God. And for me, the, the perfect time is when I get into the office, first 30 minutes, no one's usually here. I get coffee, I read my Bible and it's like, that's my space, you know, no kid, you know, no one else with me. That That's my like sacred space. And so I, I want that. I need that every morning. So that's my stuff. But uh, Pastor John, why don't you share, how do you stay connected to Jesus? Because you're a busy guy. You yeah, got three yeah, kids, you got yeah, a lot yeah. going on. Yeah, we, we, I tell people right now, especially with what we're going through right now, like my life complexity level is at 120, you know, um, <clears throat> percent. Um, and there's a lot of things. And um, I, I actually used to do that. I, I need to start doing that again, probably, honestly. Um, but two things I was thinking about that have been helpful for me within the past year. Um, one is, and I've, I've done this one for about the past year or two, is um, <clears throat> I think there's a lot of value in like the everyday rhythm. I think, you know, I think everyone should have that. But one thing for me that I found very helpful <clears throat> is like the retreat kind of thing. And I, I'd always heard people doing that. And you see d different examples of it in scripture, but I had never actually done that because I'm too busy. <laughs> you know, like that's right. the point. I'm just too, too busy, you know. And so I started doing that. And, um, you know, it was a lot of work to organize, like, with my wife, because we have three little kids now. And so it's like, and that, that's what we have to be mindful. Like, if you're married, like, it's not just like, well, I got to go get away with God. It's like, well, that creates more work for her, you know, a lot more work for her. And so, um, so anyway, the first time it took some work and some prep, I got away for like two or three days, and it was absolutely incredible. And, and in a weird way, sometimes it's awesome and sometimes it's not awesome, but that's the point. And it's like, you're realizing, oh man, there's a lot going on inside of me. I felt horrible. Why is that? Yeah. And so <clears throat> I think a, a thing for me is like, it's almost like that youth camp experience where it's like, you know, you go away for a week and the music's awesome and the preaching's awesome. And it's like, you, you can ride that wave for a while. It don't last forever. You know, that's why you got to go to youth camp next year, you know, because <laughs> we need that or retreat or whatever it is. But I have found that helpful for, like, when I go away for a couple of days, get a lot of focused time with the Lord, I catch up on journaling, I think about big picture stuff, and then it helps me to, like, I kind of ride that momentum for a while, and when I go do that for a day or so, then, or a day or two, when I come back, it is easier to have, like, my time block time that I actually keep, and so that's a big one for me. Um, and so, so once again, I think, yeah, we see that with Jesus where he kind of gets up early, goes away, kind of retreats, if you will. So that's a big one for me I've learned in this season of life. And I think also that one's important because at our stage of life, sometimes you can plan the schedule, but you don't always get to it, you know. And with kids, I, I've, I've joked before that, like, my, 
I had kid, my first kid about almost six years ago, and my, my devotional life has never recovered. Like, in a weird way, there's a level of service. Like, Pastor confessions. Yeah, seriously. Like, it, like, it's, you know, it's like, you know, and I know it's hard if someone's like, you know, I remember I used to say I was busy before kids, and I get that. I was busy. But, um, but anyway, yeah, so that, that's a helpful one for me. Um, the other one, which is very practical, I, I almost don't want to say it because it's so basic, but I, I think it's, th- that, so that's a newer thing for me. One of the, like, like, the tried and true thing for me is just, like, the rhythms of, like, church and community. Mm-hmm. And um, once again, it doesn't feel as dynamic because I've been doing it for so long. But, you know, so obviously we worship on Sundays. And I I think by God's grace, we have a church that like when I go to church, it doesn't, I mean, it feels like work, but it also is very worshipful for me and my family. Like when my family, when we come back, we feel like, hey, we listen to the sermon no matter who's preaching and the kids are talking about what they learn in kids church or whatever it is. And so, so we do that on Sunday and then our group meets on Thursday nights. And every Thursday night, you know, we're going through a certain study right now in our group. And so just from a very practical standpoint, like you're busy, so you carve out that time. But like, dude, it's almost like rarely does four days go by in a row where I've not been in an environment that's drawing my heart back to the scriptures and back to Jesus. And so, you know, honestly, like sometimes you, I'm busy or I drift, like you've got to set those anchors that won't let you drift. And so a big one for me is just like, the community, a community is big for me. Like I'm, I'm a little more extroverted. And so for me, like sitting by myself in a quiet space is a little more of a discipline. Mm-hmm. If you're going to tell me we're going to go study something together, I'm there, you know, you don't got to force me, you know? And so that's been a big one for me is like just the community vibe and like making it to where like, no matter, even if I wanted to run away, I'm going to be around people <laughs> sometime in the next four days talking about the Bible, praying for each other, confessing sin and all that kind of stuff. So it's really awesome. But what about you, Randy? So obviously we're excited to have Randy in the podcast today. What's Let's up, Randy? Randy. Hey, hey. We're excited. So Randy is our uh, lead pastor at New Day Magnolia. And um, we wanted specifically Randy on this podcast, number one, because we love Randy, but also because Randy, you have... You have a wife, two jobs, and six kids. And yeah. so yeah. how in the world are you anywhere close to Jesus with I, everything you have going on? I thought we were talking about what to do with your free time. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, no, it's cool to be here. Um, yeah, I think before I say anything, I'm going to say, like, I'm not speaking out of, like, um, being the no in this situation. Like, I, I don't feel like an expert in this. I just feel like I've tried a lot of things and tried to sort through, like, what do I do and how do I manage my time and my relationships and I've learned usually the hard way on every one of them um so I love this conversation because I think I poured into like I'm big on self-help and like I read like all non-fiction and like I just want to be better and more efficient and be the best version of me and all this stuff and so like all these books will tell you it's kind of what we said hey we'll plan your time you know plan your getaways and all that which is all true and good I think probably the biggest thing for me was realizing and remembering that my relationship with Jesus is like very much a relationship. It's not Mm -hmm. something I have to check off. It's not something I like just say I'm done with. It's something that I'm actively involved with. Just like the relationship with my wife or with my parents or with my, you know, friends. It's, it's something that is ongoing and continual in two ways. And so I think, when I think about it that way, it really helps me prioritize time with, with Jesus, time with, time with the Lord, time to say, God, how am I, you know, valuing and contributing to this relationship, mm. you know? Um, and I feel like the busier I get, you know, you can, you can kind of start feeling like, ah, my relationship's kind of off, you know? I feel like I'm not, you know, I'm not like walking step in step with this relationship. What's going on, you know? And so for me, it's easy to say, well, it's a busy season with the kids or, you know, um, you know, we're, we're busy at work or whatever. But to think about it in terms of just it's a real relationship that requires real attention and requires a real just, you know, um, just effort on my part. Uh, thankfully, you know, um, it's something where he's there. <laughs> you know, he, he's ready. Um, it's usually a lot of prep on my side to say I need to make this a priority. So, so, yeah, I love this conversation. That's really good. That's really good. So let me, I'm the moderator, so I can do whatever I want, right? So let me press into both of y'all's answers, and then you can press into mine. But, like, so so you have that mindset, you have that heart, but, like, what does staying connected to Jesus look like for you? Yeah, so I take a little bit of both of y'all's answer that you said a minute ago. Um, I don't. I don't put, you know, meet with God every morning at a certain time on my calendar, but I definitely try to calendar out as many things as I can that are going on with my life, like things I can't 
change or things that are, you know, happening meetings each week. And I, I can look at my calendar kind of at a glance and say, hey, God, I'm, I'm busy. And if I just go by this, I'll stay busy all week. Um, if I can at least look and see what can't move and then prioritize time with, you know, in, in scripture, prioritize time in prayer, um, kind of around what I can't change, uh, I definitely make that a priority. So for me, it usually looks like, you know, early mornings before, before our kids get up or before, uh, you know, busyness starts, or it might look like after people go to bed. Um, or for me, like I drive a lot. Um, I, I'm, I'm not going to tell you I just like, you know, close my eyes and pray while I'm on the freeway, but I definitely good, use that time to lean into, you know, podcasts and, and just turn off the radio and just think and, and really kind of contemplate a lot. Um, and I think that that's beneficial time, you know, and it's time that I can connect even when I'm, you know, <laughs> cruising down the road at 70 something well, miles an hour. Well, one of the things I was thinking about too was, um, cause I can imagine, you know, all three of us, like we are at a place in our life where we love the Lord. Like you don't have to convince probably any one of us that like getting alone with Jesus and his word and praying and meditating on scripture and confessing sin is, is a good thing. We believe that, right? So I'm guessing the reason why it's a struggle for all of us, because I feel like we've all admitted that, is because everything else is so busy. And I know one of the things that we talk about a lot, James, is like <clears throat> sometimes you got to start challenging the other assumptions, like that like this other thing is important. And like sometimes in life, like you just got to like look at your schedule and like fight against it and like f like figure it out, you know? Like sometimes in life, like, you know, because it's one thing if you're like, you're not quite sure if this quiet time is going to be beneficial, but like, if you know that it's, if you know, like, I need this, but I can't get there, the problem isn't the quiet time or even maybe your rhythm about the Lord. It's like, what the heck is going on with everything else in your life, yeah. you know? And I, I, I challenge people a lot of times and even like guys, especially as they kind of like lead their homes to like kind of figure it out. Because especially when you have like kids and stuff, like that becomes like the ultimate like cop out excuse. I can't do this or my right. kid's got a nap or whatever. And it's like your whole world kind of revolves around like a little kid, you know, which is weird. And I got three kids. I love my kids, you know. But I guess in a way, like I think getting smart about the rest of your life and like, like it's so funny. People will brag about like working 80 hours a week. And like all I hear is like you're bragging about inefficiency. You know, you're bragging about how you can't get it done in 40 hours. Like, work sm like if I give my, like, one of the most important things I want to give my kids is work smarter, not harder. You know, you can only grind so much. We're limited. It's, like, finite, you know. And so, I don't know. I guess part of it, too, is, like, you know, like, in a, in a kind but direct way, it's, like, figure it out. Like, like you said, like, work on getting better. Um, and what I have found for me is, like, sometimes I'm busy because I don't pray. Mm -hmm. Like, I... Because when you're not praying, you don't have like a big picture on like what's really important in life. Yeah. And so small mm -hmm. things seem like big things. And then like, I have this weird thing, like well, when I'm really close to God, like I'll have a to-do list and like random people will step in and do something for me or, or that the person I've been meaning to email emails me back, like, like supernatural things happen. And so yeah. I guess there's a level of like, you know, like having discipline, like being disciplined on like your time with the Lord, but also there's like, you know, like reining everything else in your life in and making sure that those things aren't infringing on it. And I'm guessing the big ones would be, <clears throat> for most of us, would be like <clears throat> um, kids, um, sports, all that kind of stuff, you know, taking care of them, jobs, mm -hmm. um, maybe even our own hobbies. And so, like, we get in, we're, like, watching sports or playing video games or whatever, the, the, or maybe even working out too much which is probably none of our problems. But like <laughs> some guys work out maybe, too, I don't know. But I guess kind of reining those things in, and so it's almost like a, a means of like honoring God by creating space for him and saying, yeah. God, I, God, I love you enough to sit down and think about my job and how to make it more efficient so I can be with you more or how I can, you know, get our kids and their schedules aligned or, or not do as many things to where like we're not running rampant. And I, I really believe that God blesses that. But what about you, man? What's, what's the real talk where it's like, I know you've given some ideas, but... You know, what, what's, some, what's some real talk in terms of like, like almost like, man, look at yourself and like like a few years ago, like if you could have told yourself some stuff to get there a lot quicker, what would you have told yourself? Because mm. when I met, when you came on staff back then, you were like single and didn't have a kid yet, you know? And so now your life's different. Yeah, it is different. But I, I think one, one blessing that the Lord has had for me is basically I've built that rhythm. And so like that, I've carved that space out. And so that space is there. And, and I also, you know, like we... We have busy jobs, you know, but also, you know, I am a pastor, and so there is there is an element of my work that yeah. is devotional, you know, and we, it comes with its own peril, but we do kind of have that advantage. But I think for me, like, one thing that I've, I've really, like, drawn on is just, like, 
utilizing Sarah to, you know, utilize my wife basically to help me as I like carve that time out. Cause you were talking about like retreats and stuff. And I have days where, you know, I go off and so like, and she goes off. And so we try to like trade off on that. And so I don't know, that, that'd be a question I'd pitch back to you guys. It's like for, for those who aren't married, like how do you, how can you use your marriage as something that actually like grows your walk? Cause like, you know, Sarah and I, like, we'll be honest, like we, we try to do stuff together and sometimes that works. And sometimes it's like, it's not life giving for either of us, you know? And so we realize, okay, that, that sounds like a really nice thing to do. And we pray together every night, but yeah. like, you know, it, we need also need to have our own relationship with Jesus. Mm. And so John, even as you're talking about how you go on like two day retreats and stuff, I mean, what does that look for housey and how do you like pick up for the other in those times? Mm. Yes. Well, and that's a big thing. We, so we've, we've covered for each other a lot more on that. And, and one thing I didn't mention earlier, which I should have, was the, the first time or two I did it, it was more of like, Halsey was always supportive, but it was more of like, I'm just, I'm, I'm doing this to serve you. And a couple of times when I came back, she enjoyed the fruit of it so much that she began to see like the great value in it, you know? And so that was a really cool thing where it's now like, she's like working to prioritize it with me or whatever. Um, I have watched the kids when she's gone on different things. I encourage her. Um, she's, she's different than me in a sense where she doesn't like, like that's not as big of a deal for her in a sense. Like she, maybe she's better at being disciplined every day of the week or whatever. And so that's the big thing is that. So we are uh, renovating part of our facility. So if you hear something in the background, that's what's yeah, going on. I was, I was like, what is that? Um, but, um, but yeah, that, that's been a big thing is being my. <laughs> <laughs> this is the real talk podcast. <laughs> this is a replay world, you know, like, um, <laughs> so yeah, um, no, but, but that, that's, that's been a big part of it. Um, and I think, and I, I agree in a weird way. I've noticed that too. We're like, we need our own walk with Jesus. Sometimes like, especially in like Christian church world, we like over like marriage gets like over cheesified or something. It's like, we're just going to oh, do everything together and hold the hand, you know? And it's like, it's like, sometimes I got to get with God and just like work it out by myself, right. you know? And I think there's a level of your walk that's got to be with your spouse. There's also got to be like a personal like walk with Jesus, uh, which I, I obviously is biblical. So, um, so that's that's a big part of it. But what about you, Randy? Thoughts on like you know the whole marriage thing and? Yeah, I think especially as husbands, I feel that we need to understand that you know we need to make time not only for our walk but to allow our wives to have yes. their walk. Um, and so as we work hard to plan that time for us, you know, maybe individually, um, it's equally as important to, to be sure that, like, we can create that space for our wives. So I, I know for me, especially since we have six kids and it's busy and uh, there's lots of things that we're always doing, it's super important for, for me to be able to go to Brandy and just say, you know, I feel like I probably owe you some time alone, you know, not only just to, to go and spend time with God and just, you know, but to go and listen to your music and to go and just get away from, you know, kids that need their butts wiped and stuff like that. Like you need time as well. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, I see that as I can do that as a husband, it really, uh, it prioritizes her. It shows her that, you know, I care about her and her walk with the Lord. Um, it also allows us to have conversations about where do we feel that we are, you know, just in our spirit and in our walks with God. It, it, it makes for more meaningful time together whenever we prioritize that time for one another. I'm not laughing at your answer. I'm just laughing at the <laughs> continued. This yeah. is, is going to be a meme, I think, on the meme page, which <laughs> go, follow, go follow the New Day meme page on Instagram. It's awesome. So. <laughs> Thank you guys for answering those questions and thank you guys for watching. And, you know, it's, it's a really, it's a really important question. How do you stay connected to Jesus? And so we're, we're figuring out together. That's why it's called a practice. Uh, we practice that. So hopefully this has been helpful to you and uh, hope to see you guys next time.